Good evening, and welcome to the Hub Social Club. My name is Ian Moran, and uh, I will be taking care of you tonight through the past, present, and future of the hospitality industry in North America. Just so you know, today's specials are the post-prohibition era, the hotel bar era, the modern era, and the future era. Now, I know, I know the menu might seem long and complicated, but I promise you by the time we're done, it's gonna be simplified, and we'll find the right cocktail for you. Now, before we start talking about the scotches and the brandies and the, the sidecars and Sazeracs, let me just talk a bit about myself and the scope of this presentation. I've been working in the hospitality industry for the past nine years. I had my humble beginnings working at the end of the hotel bar era phase, as I had called it, and then have been an active member in shaping the modern era of cocktailing, and hopefully I'll find myself at some point working in the future era of uh, the hospitality industry. Uh, this presentation focuses on the post-prohibition era, so 1933 until present day, and then makes predictions about the future and what the future might hold. So we begin our journey in 1933 in North America. This followed the Prohibition from 1920 until 1930, in which prohibited the sale or transportation of alcohol in the States. 1933, um, there was maybe 100 brewers left, a handful of distillers, and a couple of guys off in the bush making moonshine. Um, because the supply was so low, the demand was very high. So if you think back to old school Bond movies from, from, from the 1930s and 40s, it was epitomized by people dressed in suits and ball gowns, their pinkies up, sipping on a nice martini, and these kind of cocktails took a lot of time and effort and patience to make. These cocktails included, but are not limited to, the martini, the old fashioned, the bee's knees, a nice good pint of proprietary uh, experimental beer. Um, because these cocktails took time and effort to make, the people who were paying for these cocktails were paying premium. So if you went out to a bar in 1933 and wanted to have a nice beautiful Vesper martini or uh, a handshake and margarita, you are paying about 25 cents for that drink. And if you factor in that minimum wage at the time was only 25 cents, you would basically work for one hour at minimum wage and get one drink. You hear me talk about this term for the presentation. I call it drinks per minimum wage hour, or you can think of it as uh, an affordability index of you know how many drinks could you afford per hour worked. So we are now going to shift our attention away from the quality over quantity and talk about the hotel bar era, which is epitomized by quantity over quality. <clears throat> So a few years after Prohibition, many breweries began opening up, a lot of distillers began opening up. Um, the demand went down because the supply went up. When the supply goes up, prices also go down. This generation can be best described as the pack as many people in a place as you can, serving the cheap stuff you have on the rail, serving the only draft you have on tap, and was traditionally fueled by the blue collar baby boomer generation. So at this point, you have thousands of people, so you have more quantity than you have quality going into making your products. So the nice fancy craft cocktails got dumbed down and you have, lo and behold, the rye cokes, shots of tequila, cheap sloppy beer, and the vodka antifreeze. I mean, sorry, vodka bar lime juice, my bad. As you can see, cocktails in this era, not very complicated. If I was a 1970s pub bartender, I would have a pop gun, I'd have a liquor gun, I'd press rye, press coke, and have the cocktail done within 1.5 seconds. Now, because the job of a bartender was dumbed down so much, labor costs went down, you could afford to have a thousand people in a bar and staff it with three bartenders and uh, be good for the entire night. And this is why the hotel bar era phase could get away with having one and two cent drafts in the earlier part of it, so closer to the 1950s. And then in, uh, we'll say, 1970, um, cocktails and beer became about 60 cents. So if we get back to our argument about um, cocktail or drinks per minimum wage hour, uh, minimum wage in 1970 was about a buck 70, buck 80, so you can get a, about three drinks before tax and before dinner. If you recall from when you first sat down and I gave you your menu, I told you I used to work at a hotel bar. I was at one for, for seven years from 2010 to 2017, and I gotta say the hotel bar era has, has long since been forgotten. Uh, the people that go to the hotel bar I used to work at um, are diehards and they just want to live out that era because they liked it. Um, but I gotta say the clientele is, um, how shall we say, dying off. I would approximate that the hotel bar era lasted from about 1950 until the year 2000, at which point people were saying, hey, I want more than the vodka antifreeze. I want more than the tequila, lime, and salt. I want to have a nice good craft cocktail when I go out. And where better to look for a nice good craft cocktail than the post-prohibition era. So it's kind of funny how all the stuff gets moved around. So with pleasure, I will take this tray and move it off the side here out of your field of view by vodka antifreeze and bring back, go figure, the Vesper, the good craft beer, the Long Island iced tea, and some really good old-fashioned whiskey sours. 
The modern era began in about the year 2000 and has gone on to present day and I mean we'll see how long it lasts. Um, it is epitomized by the exact same cocktails that I was speaking about, uh, let's, let's see here, uh, oh, two minutes ago, go figure. But instead of people asking for the Sean Connery James Bond, Vespa Martini Shaken Not Stirred, they are now asking for the Daniel Craig James Bond, I'll take a vodka martini please, Shaken Not Stirred. At this point in time, quality has once again risen above quantity, and we have cocktails that, and I don't mean to sound like a broken record, um, once again have egg whites and our chili chocolate lime margarita cocktails, and um, oh, speaking of broken records, did you hear that records are now outselling CDs once again? I mean, go figure, old things are coming back into play now. Um, is that guy wearing parachute pants on my window? Anyways, let's just get back to the topic at hand, or rather, let's just uh, get back to the topic in hand. Minimum wage in North America, it ranges from $8 in the US to about $12 in Canada. So with the exchange rate between both countries, they're about the same. If you were to ask for a pint of beer at um, your local tavern or your local pub, it might come to $8 a pint before tax and board, before tip. If you ask for a nice good two ounce craft cocktail like they had back in the 30s and 40s, it's gonna run you about 10 to 12 bucks. So we're kind of back in that range of one drink per minimum wage hour or DPWMH, right? Man, I gotta tell you, it's a great time to be alive as both a bartender and a customer. On this side of the bar, I get to make you crazy zany margaritas, chili chocolate lime-based cocktails. When I'm on that side of the bar, I get to choose from 16 different tap beer. This area is epitomized, in my opinion, by two factors. The first factor being customization. Choose between 16 different beer. Do you want single malt, scotch, rye, whiskey, corn-based? Do you want your bourbon smoked in a tall glass, short glass, rocks neat? How do you want it? So customization is a very important factor in that, as well as things being locally sourced. You'll see in Winnipeg that there are lots of local craft brewers popping up, as well as some local distillers that are getting their grains um, from local farmers. So just how long is this whole modern era craft cocktail thing gonna last? I mean, it's, it's anyone's best guess. But I mean, hey, while I have you here, I might as well use this as the perfect segue into my best guess, the future era, um, or cocktail special number four. So as a bartender, it's my natural job to listen to people complain about the weather, politics, their ex-lovers, um, and I get quite a few complaints about the high price of alcohol. Why is it so expensive? And I feel like that's something that people and uh, bartenders encountered in the 30s and 40s during the post-prohibition era. Um, and as a result, demand went up, supply went up to meet, and then prices plummeted. And then when prices plummeted, people were happy for a while. Um, then they complained, man, like we want more than just like the the vodka antifreeze and the Ryan Cokes and the shots of tequila, we want to have good classic craft cocktails. So we eventually found our way into the modern era. And I feel like we're eventually going to go into a place in time where drinks are so expensive, they're like, ah, we don't want to pay for that much for cocktails and beer, so we want to have cheaper products. And as a result, the demand is going to be for vodka antifreezes and Ryan Cokes, but not to that extreme. It's going to be a different way with more modern drinks. I don't even know what it's gonna include yet, but it'll be fun to be there when it, uh, when it happens. The last question I have to ask for you is, what can I make you? I feel like you've had enough time to look at the menu. I feel like I've described all the cocktail specials. I mean, as a very quick review, your options are the high effort, high class cocktails of the post-prohibition era. You can have the Rye Cove Vodka Sev style cocktail from the hotel bar era. You can have a more sophisticated modern cocktail from the modern era, more high class, more effort to make. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you can have the future cocktail. Who knows what it holds? Um, regardless, whatever you decide, I won't judge. But remember, pinkies up and cheers. I gotta say, the crop beer explosion in North America. Hey, Parachute Pass, can you turn down the boom box? I'm trying to shoot a video here, please. Thank you. Sorry, what was I talking about?